Recording in progress. This board of trustees of Crystal City Independent School District will meet in special session at 6 p.m. Monday, January 24, 2022, in the administrative building boardroom located at 613 West Savannah Street in Crystal City, Texas. Our number one call meeting to order. Time is? 6.01. All right, number two, we'll call Ms. Carlos. <coughs> Mr. Eric Garcia. Here. Ray Espinosa. Here. Luz Mata. Here. Mr. Victor Bonilla III. Present. Mrs. Nora Flores Guerrero. Present. Mrs. Melissa Marquez Guerrero. Present. And Mrs. Peggy Young. Present. Right, for the record, we do have a quorum. Our number three, a moment of reflection. Number four, audience of patrons. No. Nobody signed down. Thank you, sir. Number five, special recognitions. A school board recognition month. Is we doing this? So, as you all know, January is a, a month that has been de designated for school board recognition. Our theme this year is rising above, uh, and so would like to take the opportunity to thank you all for your commitment and service to the students and the community. Uh, of Crystal City ISD. Uh, so in recognition, Mr. Eric Garcia, three years of service. Mr. Rey Espinosa, nine years of service. Mr. Cruz Mata, a year of service. Mr. Victor Bonilla, the third, three years of service. Nora Flores Guerrero, five years of service. Mel Melissa Marquez Guerrero, three years of service. And Peggy Young, nine years of service. So on behalf of the Crystal City Independent School District, uh, all of our directors present to here and our guests, we thank you for your commitment and dedication to the students of Crystal City ISD. Uh, typically, traditionally, we have the students present the, all of the nice gifts that you see around the boardroom, but because of COVID, the transmissibility rate, our high numbers, uh, we have asked the principals to just follow <coughs> the gifts, so you, uh, they're yours, uh, please take them uh, as we conclude the meeting. Thank you all for your service. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. All right, number six, consent action items. A, consider to approve the minutes for the December 13th public hearing and December 13th regular board meeting. The recommendation is that the Board of Trustees approve the consent action items as per the attached individual recommendations under consent. Motion on the floor. Uh, President, I move that uh, we that we separate the minutes. Sure. Uh, okay. Can we do the public hearing first? Yes. Uh, All right. I got a motion on the floor to accept only the public hearing minutes for December 13th. The recommendation is that the Board of Trustees approve uh, the minutes for the December 13th, 2021 public hearing. I got a motion by Mr. Bonilla. A second. Second by Ms. Nora Guerrero. Any council questions? Does it matter even though it was only two of us that I'm going to ask that question. Excuse me, sir, if I, if I may ask. Sure. I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, we, had, we did have minutes. We did have official minutes of the meeting, of the public hearing. Right. We didn't, we didn't have a quorum because it's okay. not required for a public hearing, but we do have So we can, uh, 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 we can adopt them. Okay. All right. Uh, just wondering. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor to accept the public hearing minutes? Please raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Our motion passes 7-0. All right, second part is the regular board meeting minutes for December 13th. Any motions? So move to approve. I got a motion by Mr. Bonilla. Second by Ms. Nora Guerrero. Any comments or questions? All in favor, please raise your hand. Ms. Young, you in favor? Motion passes 7 0. All right, going on to be considered to approve the monthly bills for December 2021. Ms. Jonas. The recommendation is that the Board of Trustees approve the monthly bills for December 2021 under consent action. I move. I got a motion on the floor by Ms. Nora Guerrero. Second. Second by Mr. Bonilla. 
Any comments or questions? All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes 7 0. All right, moving on to seven. Action items A discussion considered to appoint a facilitator for the Crystal City Pilgrimage Committee. Ms. Jones. So, the recommend, uh, so, what we're asking for is for the board to sit in and um, listen to Dr. Gonzalez and his guests present uh, information regarding the Japanese internment camp and plants that the committee has uh, that require uh, board support and board action. Dr. Gonzalez. Uh, just uh, to give you a background, background information before I hand it off to Victor. Uh, my brother Tony volunteered me into this, <laughs> this committee. Uh, and, uh, my brother Tony has communicated with uh, Victor and the rest of of the uh, uh, here, they have an intern here in the intern camp, and they have approached us, and they want to establish working relationships. But I'll let Victor go ahead and, and kind of uh, tell you the background information on that. Victor? Uh, yes, thank you, um, Alberto, and uh, uh, Board President uh, Eric Garcia and uh, Dina Briones, uh, Acting Administrator, and uh, my, my Tokayo, uh, Victor Bonilla, uh, and the board members, I just want to say thank you for allowing us to address all of you tonight. Um, it was just a little bit over two years ago that we visited Crystal City on our pilgrimage on uh, November 2nd of 2019, and my background, if you can see it, is from the memorial program uh, that we conducted at the swimming pool site of the internment camp where there were two uh, Japanese Peruvian girls who tragically died. Uh, and there were the honoring of many others who were in the camp who passed during that time. Uh, we have been conducting work uh, around the pilgrimage and we are looking forward to uh, promoting friendship and understanding uh, with Crystal City uh, to support future pilgrimage efforts, to support educational efforts about the internment camp, uh, both in Crystal City and the broader public, and to support the restoration of historic structures from the camp and an educational center to preserve and teach important lessons from that history. Um, so a member of the board uh, to work with the Crystal City Pilgrimage Committee uh, would greatly facilitate that work and this effort. So my father was a student in high school at the federal high school in the internment camp. Uh, I have a deep personal family uh, commitment to do this work. And addressing the board tonight will also be uh, Kaz Naganuma. He is a Peruvian Japanese who as a child was in the camp. And also Hiroshi Shimizu, who was also a child uh, in the internment camp uh, in World War II. So, uh, at this time, if, if I could quickly give it over to uh, Kaz, who is our, uh, one of the co-chairs of the pilgrimage. So Kaz. Well, th thank you very much for including uh, us on the agenda today. Uh, my name is Kaz Naganuma. Uh, my full name is Kazumu Julio Cesar Naganuma. Uh, I was born in Callao, Peru. And uh, my family was kidnapped um, uh, from Callao, Peru in 1944. And we were imprisoned at the Crystal City camp from uh, March 1944 to uh, September 1947, three and a half years. Um, I got involved with the pilgrimage because of my father and mother's sake. It's, it, it was everything that they had was taken away. So I was so pleased and uh, when we arrived at the pilgrimage in 2019, uh, we were so warmly welcomed by the, your mayor and uh, the judge and the school. And what we wanted to do was to continue the friendship and the warm welcome that you gave us back then. And we have some ideas of what we'd like to do for 2022. And we can explain that in a short while, but uh, we first want to introduce ourselves, meet you, and try to establish a good uh, friendship uh, that we can do work together. Uh, I'll turn this over to Hiroshi Shimizu. Mike. Hi, uh, I'm Hiroshi Shimizu. 
I was uh, in Crystal City from March of uh, 1946 until September of 1947. I was uh, born in a concentration camp hospital in central Utah, a place they called Topaz. And um, my family uh, and I got the grand, kind of a grand tour of, uh, of the concentration camps uh, before I turned six months old. Um, <clears throat> when I was four months old, uh, we took a roundabout uh, trip from central Utah to Idaho, a place called Minidoka, and then to Heart Mountain in Wyoming, and then uh, to our destination, which was uh, the, the uh, internment camp at Ellis Island, where we were awaiting the uh, departure of the second exchange ship, the Gripsum, uh, which left uh, the port of uh, uh, Jersey City across the Hudson from uh, Ellis Island uh, in September of 1943. But when we made that trip across the river, um, the boat was full and so uh, we were a uh, leftover, so to speak, and they uh, moved us to uh, the concentration camp in Arkansas, a place called Roar. And we were there for about four or five days. And then um, we were transferred to uh, Thule Lake, which was uh, the segregation center. It was the camp where they segregated to so disloyals, which was a segregation center. It was the camp where they uh, okay, and um, we were there until March of 1946 when they were getting ready to deport us and uh, the lawyer Wayne Collins uh, interceded and prevented the deportation and we were then shipped to Crystal City. Um, <clears throat> and we remained there until 1947. When, when my father got to uh, Crystal City, he became the uh, spokesman for the Japanese at, at Crystal City. So he was intimately involved in uh, much of what was going on within the camp. And uh, his main job, as he saw it, was uh, getting people released. So. Um, he stayed until uh, pretty much until the end because he didn't want to give that job up to anybody else. And so we were there uh, pretty much until uh, they closed uh, Crystal City. So I have uh, um, an investment in, in Crystal City and I feel that uh, uh, when we went to that pilgrimage in uh, 2019, I felt like I was coming home so uh, I'm very glad to be a part of this uh, committee and, uh, uh, and hoping to, uh, to make a connection with uh, the school board and, uh, and others at Crystal City. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Victor, <laughs> Victor, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Could you tell more or less quickly uh, what, what we have discussed, different things that might, might be happening, but of course we come back for approval. No, thank you for that uh, question. Um, as you know, the um, COVID, the pandemic has uh, hindered our efforts to do pilgrimages. Um, the one that we had in 2019 was very uh, successful. Uh, there's ongoing interest, um, but immediately uh, in the present 2022 year, we were hoping to uh, sponsor uh, an essay and art contest uh, at your high school uh, to, to try to bring to the students an awareness of the history of their city um, and that, that, uh, that time. Uh, so that was one project that we would want to contribute to and, and work with the school district if the school district would want to support this uh, kind of effort. Um, the other thing that uh, we are trying to uh, promote is the pilgrimage, and we don't know if it's possible later this year. 
uh, if it's a small scale pilgrimage, but we think ongoing visits to the city uh, are very important, uh, not just for our community, uh, but for many people uh, to learn from the history, other students, other people in the country. And then the third thing that we are looking at long range is the establishment of an educational center uh, to teach and preserve the history uh, of that, that time, uh, World, War time World, World War II time. So those are three things that we were uh, hoping that a facilitator from the district would uh, work with us and help us to, uh, um, <coughs> to promote. Board, so, so what, the, what the group is trying to do is that if instead of coming to you like this in the board meeting, that we would have a board member that would be asked to be part of the committee. That way the board member can come back and bring you information as things are being devised or thought out or, or that okay. type of uh, uh, Okay, everything's okay. Uh, and then um, I'm gonna see if I see this. So, so that, that's more or less where we're at. It's all in the planning stages. Things will come your way for final approval. Uh, and, but we need to keep you abreast as to the, the thinking of the committee and, you know, maybe may moving uh, one of the older buildings back into the site. And it might be in the, in, the, in the school site or it might be in the city site. We don't know yet. All of that is in the planning stages. But they, before they start moving, they know they need to have your support. Uh, so right now, the committee is asking maybe for, for one of you to be the facilitator and, and to say, uh, yay, let's go forward, and, but bring us the projects for final approval later on. Do you have any questions for that? So the building in hand, what exactly are they trying to do with the building? We don't know yet. Everything is thinking way, that's way ahead. That's a long way thing. Uh, we know we've identified three buildings that are actually in Carrizo Springs uh, that actually came from the, from the internment camp. Now, <clears throat> moving, cost, buying, that, coming back, maybe putting it here in Crystal City, maybe one or two or three, or <clears throat> all of that is in the planning stages. We do not have all the answers now. That's long range. But the short range would be and we talked to Ruben Salazar is also part of the committee, and uh, to set up an uh, uh, art contest, uh, essay contest, and the committee is willing to kind of give the kids, kids some scholarship money for doing so. And uh, I believe that uh, Mr. Salazar has already communicated that to, to the social studies department, the social studies department, and uh, the kids are all excited about uh, teaming up with, with the committee uh, and, and do that right now, sometime during the spring, maybe late spring, May, somewhere, somewhere down the line. Any volunteers? Mr. Bonilla. <laughs> History teacher? Oh, I know, I know, but uh, as much as I want to uh, do this, uh, I'm not going to be able to do it. Uh, in my current situation that I find myself in, uh, it's going to really, really li limit me in that regard. I Otherwise, I would, big time. But, uh, and what is the commitment, I mean, as far as meeting and stuff like that, what is in the plans on that? The party, whoever, whichever board member decides to be part of the, the committee, it's when they need to communicate to you. They're going to be doing a lot of planning, but it's going to be when every time they want to communicate to the board, They'll talk to one of you, and you can bring that information to the board instead of doing that, us doing this, right? Mm -hmm. Not unless you want us to come back every single time. But I would, I would think that one, you know, that the process over here should be, you know, meet two or three times, and then bring it to the board and, instead of us coming to the board every single time. Where do they live? They live in California. Go Niners. Niners. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I'll do it. I, I have, I'll do it. I'll commit myself to it. And uh, you guys can email me whatever y'all need to. I'll volunteer myself to it. Thank you so much. And, and who was volunteering? Uh, Eric Garcia. The president, Eric Garcia. Oh, thank you. 
get some action. That's wonderful. Sorry. Okay. So, just, and just in case, I'll be his backup in case he can't. Can we? Can we just do two? Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Here you go. I have yes. You cannot be more than. You cannot be a committee, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Or, yeah. 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 Okay. I think Melissa made the motion. I made the motion. Okay, I got a motion from Ms. Uh, what, what is the motion, ma'am? And I got a motion on the floor by Ms. Melissa Guerrero. I'll second. Okay. Second by Ms. Nora Guerrero. Any comments or questions? All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Victor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you so much. Good luck with everything. Good luck. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. All right, moving on to B, discussion and consider to approve the district's annual financial report for the 2021, 2020, sorry, 2021 school year ending August 31st of 2021. <laughs> So we're going to listen to Mr. Eads' presentation. Of, uh, Do you want to pull that forward, sir? Yeah, District Center Financial Report for the 2021 school year ending August 31st, 2021, as presented. Mr. <laughs> If you'll turn to page three, this is our uh, certificate of the board, uh, where the board will need to approve this, approve this audit tonight. We need to have uh, about three copies uh, on file in the district office, one to send it to the TDA uh, and a couple more to pass on in, in the office. On page five is our audit opinion. You received an unmodified opinion again this year. This is the best opinion you can receive. And in our opinion, the financial statements are presented fairly and conformity with general accepted accounting principles as of the end of your year, August 31st, 2021. Again, this is the best opinion you can receive. On page eight starts the management discussion and analysis. This is the same information that's presented in the body of the financial statements. But as you go through here, you'll see there's comparisons to prior years, uh, pie charts of your revenues and expenditures. Uh, if, if you're like me and pictures mean more to you than numbers, it's a good way of looking at things. The body of the financial statements start on page uh, 16. This is the same in that position. This is on the full accrual method of accounting. Your books are normally kept on the modified accrual method of accounting, but approximately 10 years ago, uh, the Governmental Accounting Standards Board required us to present the financial statements also in the full accrual method. So that's what the first part of these schedules are. As you go through here, the top part of our page is our assets. We have our deferred outflows of resources, our liabilities, deferred inflow of resources, and our net position. As you go through here, it's, it's the normal things you have, but we have the additions of your fixed assets. We have your land, building, and equipment, net of depreciation. We also have some pretty good liability numbers in here that you normally don't have on your bank, uh, your, your uh, monthly statements that you see. We have uh, the deferred inflows and the liabilities for your pension and for the other post-employment benefits. And you, like other districts, that's a pretty good liability. Uh, if, if you will look down under the uh, liabilities, our net pension liability is $4.6 million. However, the amount that it's going to take to pay health insurance on the retirees is $5.8 million. That just goes to show you the, the cost of, of health care is, is so high that it's going to cost you more to, to pay for your retirees' health insurance than it is for their retirement. So, uh, again, about four years ago, we were required to start putting these liabilities on. And as a result, if you look at the bottom of the page, we have a total net position of $7.6 million. However, because of all these liabilities, you have a unrestricted net assets of a negative $4,400,000. Uh, don't be alarmed, you are, you're not alone. This is every school district, every county, every city, every governmental agency has the same issue. In fact, uh, it's, it's a lot better now than it used to be because you have increased your fund balance. But uh, 
it's it's designed to give the readers of the financial statements a better overall look of what your true liability would be is if everybody had to pay these liabilities today. So uh, again, we'll turn to page uh, 18. This is the information that you're normally looking at, at on a monthly basis. We have the general fund, our special revenue fund, our debt service fund on the right hand side of the page, and our capital projects fund. We still have the capital projects fund open. Uh, top part of our page is assets, middle is our liabilities, bottom is our fund balance. Going down the general fund, we had total assets in the general fund at the end of the year, 15593000 Our liabilities of the general fund were 3539000 Our deferred uh, inflows, which is the offset of our property taxes, is $1,417,000. So we had a, when we subtract that and our liabilities from our assets, we have a total fund balance at the end of the year, 10637069 The special revenue fund, we had $431,000 worth of assets at the end of the year, $390,000 worth of liabilities. So we have a fund balance in the federal program of $40,000. This is what we should expect. Because most of your federal program are, are revenue neutral. We don't uh, basically have uh, expect to have any fund balances. Uh, the fund balance in these are mainly due to uh, some of your state programs that carry over from year to year, but the majority of your federal programs don't have fund balances. So this is what we should expect. In the debt service fund, we have total assets at the end, end of the year of 2889000 our, uh, we had no liabilities for the debt service fund. We had the offset of our property taxes of $343,000. So we have a fund balance for the debt service fund of $2,546,000. And that money is restricted. It can only be used for debt service. So uh, you've got a, a pretty good cushion uh, in your debt service fund uh, because your total expenditures for the year in your debt service funds are $3.7 million. So uh, we've got, you know, over half of our uh, year's worth of expenditures for the debt service left there. And then the capital projects fund, this, this is funds that's still left over from the, the, the high school capital project. Uh, we have uh, $740,000 worth of cash. And that is still restricted for capital projects until you as a board decide to do something with that. There was some talk, I think, in the past about transferring that money. Uh, that's, that's entirely up to your board. But as long as it's in a capital projects funds, it's going to be restricted. If you return to page uh, 22, this is the statement of uh, revenues, expenditures, and changes in fund balance. We have the same funds, the general fund, the special revenue fund, the debt service fund, and the capital projects fund. Uh, top part of our page is revenues, and our bottom is our expenditures. Our total revenues for the general fund were $20,062,000. Uh, 20, our expenditures in the general fund were eighteen million eight hundred two. So we had excess ex uh, revenues over expenditures of $1,260,000. However, we transferred out $676,000 to various different funds, mainly to the uh, internal uh, service fund or insurance fund. So when those uh, transfers were taken away from our excess, we had a net change in our fund balance of the year of $583,000 positive. So when we add that to our beginning fund balance of $10 million, we have our ending fund balance $10,637,000. <coughs> Bottom line, we increased our fund balance $583,000. Special revenue fund, $4.7 million worth of revenues, $4.7 million worth of expenditures. Uh, again, this is what we would expect. Uh, it's like a, a, a wash on your, your federal revenue pr program. Uh, this, we had a, a, a negative of uh, $5,680. So we subtract that for our beginning fund balance to arrive our annual fund balance of $40,424. The debt service fund on, on the next page, on page 23, we had total revenues of uh, 4,091,000. Our expenditures were 1,990,000 for principal, 1,763,000 interest. Uh, so we actually had an uh, increase in our uh, 
revenues over expenditures of $338,000. However, we had $83,000 that was transferred in from the general fund, so our fund balance increased $422,300. The capital projects fund, the only thing we had was a little bit of interest income for the year, uh, $1,020. So <clears throat> adding that to our beginning fund balance to arrive at our ending fund balance of $740,000. If you'll turn to page 25, uh, because the district has an internal service fund for its health insurance and its uh, uh, workman's call, uh, that is carried in a proprietary fund. At the end of the year, it had $1.8 million worth of assets. We had $1.3 million that was due to the general fund. So it has a unrestricted net position at the end of the year of $595,000. On page 26 shows the statement of revenues and expenditures for that fund, for the proprietary fund. We had $2.9, almost $3 million that was brought in basically from the general fund and other funds to pay for uh, insurance. However, we spent $3.5 million on expenses directly related to those items. So we had an operating loss of $569,000. We had transfer in from other funds of $893,000, transfer out of $300,000. So actually we had a net change in position of $23,000. And then the next schedule shows the, the cash flow of the pro proprietary fund, shows where your cash came from, where it went. Uh, in this case, it pretty much mirrors your, your, expense, uh, your, your uh, revenues and expenditures. Our cash actually increased $18,000 for the year. On page 28, because you, are, you have uh, student activity funds, uh, we're required to present uh, the assets and the, on the next page on page 29, the change in fiduciary funds to the student activity funds. At the end of the year, we had $63,000 that belonged to the student activity funds. This is a little bit of a change from last year. Uh, used to, we did not, we were not required to present the statement of changes uh, on page 29. But uh, this last year, uh, TEA required us to start preventing that. So uh, in this case, we showed the changes. We had $16,000 that came in to the student activity funds, $23,000 from the now. So we had a decrease in the student activity funds of $7,462. On page 30 starts the notes of the financial statements. These are the notes that are required by federal accepted accounting principles. Uh, every year these notes get a little bit longer, a little bit more complex. Uh, we will not go through these, but if you will turn and find that page. Page 38 and 39, this shows your capital asset activities. It shows what our beginning balances by types of asset we had at the beginning of the year, our additions, we had $423,000 worth of additions to our furniture for the year. We had uh, $1.9 million worth of depreciation for the year. So it shows what our ending uh, balance is in our capital asset activity. And then we have a breakdown of our, our depreciation by the various different uh, functions. Uh, total depreciation year, $1,976,000. The bonds payable on the bottom of 38 and the top of uh, page 39, we had $42,330 worth of uh, bonds that were outstanding at, at the end of the year. We paid uh, $1.9 million this year. Uh, and then you can see underneath that, it sh uh, there's a, a schedule that shows what you're going to have to pay for debt service for the next five years and then five year increments after that. Uh, so uh, again, we've got a long way to go before we pay off, uh, mainly the, 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 the high school was the, the big thing that mm -hmm. transpired back in 2015. Uh, but just wanted to bring your attention to that. Uh, if you will turn now to page Page 50, uh, one of the things I'd like to point out, we'll see this in a minute on your, your, your uh, budget versus actual schedules, but 
we did exceed our, our budget in uh, several funds in the general fund, uh, and then also the, the debt service fund. We're required to report those out to, to the reader in the financial statement, which we'll see in a minute. On page uh, 52, this is the, the budget comparison for the general fund. This is the same information we looked at before with the general fund, but this time we're comparing for our budget. You'll notice on the left hand side of the page, uh, of page 52, we have the original budget, we have the final amended budget, and then on page 53, we have the actual amount and the variance from the actual to the final. <coughs> So at the end of the year, we had total revenues of $20,062,538. We had anticipated that we were going to bring in $20,647,000. So we have an unfavorable budget variance of $1.5 million, mainly in the state programs. Uh, we didn't get as much state money as we anticipated. On the expenditures, we had anticipated that we were going to spend $22,805,000. However, we only spent $18,802,000, so we have a favorable budget variance of $4,2606,000. Uh, you can go through and see we were overall uh, a lot of those, but we did uh, blow our budget on school leadership uh, and guidance and counseling, also on uh, general uh, administration and plant maintenance. I'm sorry, not plant maintenance, on... Uh, data processing. So uh, we did have four items that we went over on. Uh, one of the things that we're going to, we recommend that you do is at the end of the year, uh, you know, try to amend your budget so that we don't have these variances. Uh, some of these <coughs> could be caused by audit adjustments because of us, but in this case, uh, there weren't that many adjustments. So uh, it was probably just a matter of there was not enough personnel to go around. It's time to get the budget amended. The bottom line is that we had anticipated that we were going to actually spend $1.3 million more than we brought in. However, we actually brought in $583,000 more than we did. So we have a, a total of federal budget parents of almost uh, $2 million. So all in all, that's very good. The next few schedules are basically just notes that are required uh, <coughs> to the future retirement system things that you don't have any control over, so we'll skip those and go to page 60. Uh, this is the schedule of the taxes receivable. This shows what your uh, tax rates have been for the last 10 years, uh, what your assessed values have been over the last 10 years, what your uh, property tax receivable at the beginning of the year, what your current levy is, and then your collections, and then what your uh, adjustments and final ending fund uh, tax balance is. So, as you can see, we had a total levy for this year of $13,635,000. We had collected all but $365,000 of that. Uh, we still have $1.6 million outstanding. Uh, that amount is probably a little bit high. Uh, it's probably higher compared to, to most schools that we deal with. Uh, the current collections isn't bad, but you have, you know, a, a, a Pretty good sizable amount of property taxes that are still outstanding from prior years. Uh, property taxes aren't ever uh, written off because if the property changes hands, uh, those property taxes will have to be paid before that property can trans uh, transfer. So eventually you will collect that. Uh, you're also, your appraisal district is probably working with their delinquent uh, tax attorneys trying to collect some of this. But again, that, that shows you a pretty good idea. One of the things that, you know, I don't need to tell you this, but you, it's really uh, kind of blows up in your face when you see what your property uh, values have done uh, over the last 10 years. I mean, it's, it's been a roller coaster ride uh, up and down. And as a result, I think I've talked to you about this before, property taxes are directly related, related to your state funding, only it's about a two year gap. So as property taxes go up, two years later your state funding is going to go down, so you can get hit with a whammy where your property taxes are low, but then they're hitting you with low state uh, revenue from two years ago, so uh, it's always something that you, you, because of where you are in the, in, in the, the, the oil area, that, that you've got to really manage your, your cash flow because you can get hit with a decreasing uh, property tax values also with a two-year uh, hit from the state revenue. 
On page 62, uh, we're required to submit the budget for your child nutrition program. Uh, again, if I was the same format, we have the budget amounts on the on page 62 and then the actual and, and variance on page 63. Uh, we had anticipated we were going to bring in $1.6 million worth of revenue. We actually only draw in uh, 908000 so we have a uh, unfavorable budget variance there of $712,000. Our expenditures, uh, we had anticipated spending $1.6 million, however, we only spent $704,000. I would imagine a lot of this has to do with COVID, uh, not being able to keep your lunchroom open. Uh, however, that resulted in a uh, positive variance of 916. So when we net the two together, we had a uh, positive variance in our uh, food service program of $203,000. And as a result, you have accumulated a pretty good increase in your fund balance of your food service program. You can see we started out at the beginning of the year with $8,300, but because of the $203,000 increase, we have a fund balance in our food service program at the end of the year of $212,000. Next page, page 64, is the debt service fund uh, budget versus actual. Uh, we had anticipated bringing in $3.6 million. We actually brought in a little over $4 million. So we had a uh, $422,000 favorable budget variance. Expenditures came in pretty much right on target. However, we did probably miss $400 worth of bond costs that were not budgeted for that threw you over budget there. But bottom line is, is that we had a $422,000 favorable budget matters. If you will turn to page 69, because you received more than $750,000 programs. We're required to do what's called a single audit, which means that we have to do additional testing of those federal programs. This first opinion is basically our opinion on uh, your compliance and internal controls uh, in accordance with governmental auditing standards, and you received an unmodified opinion. There were no instances of uh, 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 compliance issues or, or internal control issues. Uh, that were directly related to your uh, governmental auditing standards. Again, because you have over $750,000 worth of federal programs, we're required to go in and do specific testing of some of your uh, federal programs. This year, we tested your Title I program, uh, and we did uh, a, a more significant uh, compliance testing and internal controls over your Title I program. And uh, you received an unmodified opinion for your Title I program. There were no instances of non-compliance or internal control problems with your Title I program. And basically, that's what page uh, 73 is showing you, that we tested that, and there were no findings and questions caused. Then finally, on page 77, we were required to list all of your federal programs. Uh, this carries over to the next page, page 78. Uh, you can see that we received a total of five million five hundred eighteen thousand dollars for the federal program money this year. Uh, you received quite a bit of uh, additional funding this year, like all other school districts. Uh, you received the, the ESSER money. Uh, total ESSER money this year was two point six million dollars. Uh, this has been a real help to a lot of our school districts because most of this money is going directly to your bottom line. So uh, it's we we had schools that were really in hard shape before, and the the, the federal money that came in this year has really been a, a help to them. Uh, other, I know we all, all purchased a lot of equipment with this. Uh, a lot of our districts that had already done that. You know, they were able to to you know use these funds to offset normal expenses that they were incurring, and basically just increasing the capital. That's going over it pretty fast. Uh, part of our procedures is we go through and do the testing of your expenditures, uh, looking for, uh, make sure that all items, uh, your internal control systems are, are, are adequate and everything is documented by uh, purchase orders and uh, invoices and in our sample, all those were. Uh, I'd say bottom line is we have a little over $500,000 increase in our fund balance. Uh, if you will turn to the, to the very front, there's a couple of loose pages in there. 
In fact, there is one single page. This is our management letter. Uh, we're required to, to tell you things that we would like to see done differently. And you know, I don't need to tell you, but one of the biggest problems we had with this audit, this was a this was probably the cha most challenging audit we've had uh, here in a long time because of the time constraints. We we just we weren't able to start on this audit until basically 12 days ago when we got found out the, the final number. Uh, just with the change in, in, in staff personnel, it was, it was really hard. And so, you know, hopefully going forward, I was talking to Mr. earlier today that, you know, she said you've contracted with T, uh, uh, Region 20 to do your bookkeeping from now on. I think she said you're contracting with a, a financial advisor. So hopefully those things will be able to, to alleviate some of the problems for future years so we can start a little earlier. Uh, get you this but so we don't have these last minute you know uh, special meetings because it puts everybody in a bind y'all too because now you have to go in and, and put all this into TEA before the 28th. What um, what can we reasonably expect from TEA with some of this like you know not being able to do your audit that's you're not going to get anything probably from them on that now you will get um, if you go down to the next one on number two okay. you will get a letter from tea telling you amend your budgets basically i mean we we have we have school districts that get those every year okay. and it's basically they just send you a letter telling you uh state law requires you not to spend anything until you have it budgeted so I wouldn't be concerned with that. Mm -hmm. The other issue is, is like I say, we understand our compensatory education. Uh, that could or could not be a problem. I can't tell you what, what they're going to do with that. We're just required to report on it. You're required to spend 55% of your uh, compensatory state allotment, and in this case, you did not spend that much. Uh, whether or not that's going to result in something for TEA, I can't tell you. Questions? Right, when, when, has, when does this report needs, needs to be submitted to TA? I can't hear. <laughs> right, so when do we have to submit? The 28th. The 28th. 28th of, of yes. Yeah. Thursday. Thursday. Friday. 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 Friday 20th. Okay. Have to submit the report, and then there's also uh, what they call the Gatsby data feed where you you basically have to key in the report into their system. You know, used to, TA had a lot of people on staff and you would send them with your audit report and then they would have someone key all this information in. Now they're putting it on you. You have to actually key this information in. So when TA gets a report, they don't have to do all that. It's already ready to be uploaded into their database at that point in time. And then there's also some PEAMS information that I believe has to be done by the 28th also. Yeah. So again, that's why I was saying it's really kind of it's 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 kind of tough because you know it puts a lot of pressure on your staff to have to get all this done in the next few days too. Any questions? No. All right, Ms. what is your recommendation? The recommendation is that the Board of Trustees approve the district's annual financial report for the 2021 school year ending August 31st, 2021, as presented by Mr. Eden. Motion. Any motions on the floor? I got a motion by Mr. Cruz Mata. Second. Second by Ms. Nora Guerrero. I have a question. Uh, Go ahead, sir. Mr. Ones, do you already have the... Uh, Personnel ready to start on this thing. Yes, as soon as the board approves the the audit, we turn it over to Region Twenty. Okay. They're, they're waiting on it already. So Region Twenty submits it to TEA. Yes. No, Region Twenty will input and oh, okay. then I submit. Okay, I got you. So overall, between one to ten, how is this? Financially, you're very good. Like I say, to 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 be able to go through what. The district has gone through the last year. Uh, my concern is, is like I said, I, I, I was discussing this this, this afternoon with Mr. Rowe, is that you know I have no problem with Region 20. They they do an excellent job. They know the numbers forward and backwards. What you're going to be missing is someone at the district level that sees the overall big picture. Uh, and you know, hopefully, with you know, I didn't realize that you had contracted with someone. Who 
quote, quote, overseer, you know, uh, uh, contract uh, business manager, I guess is what you would call it. But that's what you, you know. That's not what we're calling it, though. He is a financial consultant. He's not our business manager. Okay. But someone that feels. Somebody, something to consider, yes. Someone that fills those shoes to see the, the big picture items, you know, because uh, Region 20 is going to be in. They're, 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 they're in the, the number crunching, basically, right. what they're doing. And there's a lot of things that, uh, for example, you know, there, there's so many things that TEA puts on you to do that you have to have someone to manage those issues. You know? I have a question. Uh, my question would be, if there was someone at the district level hired to do that, what kind of qualifications would you recommend that person has rather than just getting anyone off the street? You see what I'm saying? Mainly, the, the, the education is not as, as important to me as experience in the school district. Uh, finance is the main thing. You know, I have some school districts that don't have business managers, but their superintendent used to be a business manager or something like that, so the superintendent can, can fill up those roles also. But it's mainly the experience and the, the the school finance is what we need someone to those. So would you say that a person that is like a designated liaison between Region 20 and the school district would serve that role? Could be, yes. Cool. Those are the only questions I had. I figured maybe the board would like to hear that. Thank you. Good question. And again, sir, this is for the end of last school year. Yes. As of Thank you, sir. Okay. All right, so at this point, I got a motion by Mr. Cruz Mata, second by Ms. Nora Guerrero. Any other questions? All right, all in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes 7-0. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You Thank you, sir. You know where you are if you have any questions. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. E. All right, moving on to C, discussion considered approved budget amendment with bonus. So this is, thank you, thank you, Mr. <clears throat> the first budget amendment that we are bringing before the board that does require board approval. Uh, this, uh, we are asking the board to approve us moving $35,000 out of uh, function code 11 and 31, and we are going to place it back into function code 36. Uh, in order for us to move money between codes, we do need board approval. I'm sorry, you're moving from what to what? We're moving from uh, function code 11 and 31, which is what? 11 is instruction. Uh, 11 is instruction and 31, 31 is guidance. Uh, so for 31, we have what we have done is we have reclassified all of the counseling, all of what we call function code 31, into ESSER 3. So all of the salaries are now for counseling, the PIMS clerks, the counselors' aides, everything that goes with their, their payroll has moved into uh, function code, function, not, I'm sorry, not function, fund code uh, 282, which is ESSER 3. So we have freed up that money in local. And so now we need 35,000 of that money that we freed up so that we can move it into function code 36 to continue paying uh, coaches' wages. We got a motion on the floor, but the only, that's the only one that this is the first amendment that we've had. What you're bringing us tonight? Yes, it is the first one since we approved the budget back in August. Correct. Thank you. All right, I got a motion, Mr. Cruz, second by Ms. Nora Guerrero. Any other comments or questions? All in favor, please raise your hand. Ms. Young? Vote no. You're not voting no? Motion passes. Six to one. All right, D. Discussion considered to approve the 2021-2022 application for staff development minute waiver for the January 7th through January 19th, 2021. The, the, uh, the recommendation is that the Board of Trustees approve the 2021-2022 uh, application for staff development minutes waiver for January the 7th through January the 19th. This is when we went into remote 
learning because of, of the tension stability rate. This is a waiver that needs to be board approved. And so those are the dates that we're asking. Uh, as I notified you all, the TA has approved our waiver. We just need to get, get it board approved. As soon as it's board approved, I go in into the waiver system and input our information. Any motions? I move. I move. All right, I got a motion by, I'll give it to Melissa. I have a second by Mr. Bonilla. Any comments or questions? No. All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes 7 0. All right, E, discussion considered to approve emergency sick leave resolution for the remainder of the 21 50 school year. The recommendation is that the Board of Trustees approve the emergency leave resolution for the remainder of the 21 22 school year. This is the resolution that had been approved for the first semester. Uh, and so what we are asking, since we're having such a peak uh, coming into the spring semester, that the sick leave be extended to the rest of the, the rest of the school year, the regular school year. How many days, sir? Remind us. <laughs> How many days? Sir? It's about 80 hours, which is 10 days. 10 days. Mm -hmm. 14 days. Yeah, I don't have any problem with that, but I, I need for you to look. And I think uh, several school districts, including Carrizo, and and that's something maybe for the future that we only approve this for the people that are fully vaccinated. Ahorita it's okay, but check into that. Because and I know Mr. Espinosa, I did run it through legal, and I was told that that was not possible; that we would have to make it open to everybody. Sir, you didn't do it well. I know. Do you have Carrizo Springs? No. Or yes, but the thing is, I'm not sure what happened over there. They, the thing they, is, they, I, they, what they, I can they, say is, uh, you know, if you try to differentiate between people that are vaccinated or not vaccinated, you open the door to a discrimination lawsuit because well, the federal yeah. government hasn't really ruled Juan whether Cruz, or not. Juan Cruz recommended that to the board in Crystal City. But right now, I want it to be checked. But check with Juan Cruz because he's the attorney for Carrizo. Carrizo is doing it. They approved it. And he said it was okay. So just check. Huh. I can look into it because at the same time, we're only here to make recommendations. And at the end of the day, the board can do whatever it pleases. Well, no. Oh, and I know that's what we pay you for. But <laughs> check with one group. And then we'll okay. decide maybe next year or whatever. But Carrizo approved that. And it was based on the recommendation of attorney. Okay. The only one that, that, that will get that is a, mm -hmm. they, and they even have a personnel uh, the names of the people that are vaccinated and everything. So check. I understand. Check. And you, you, make, you make a good point, and I'll look into it, and I'll get back to you. Thank you, sir. Thank Mr. You, Mr. Mr. Morales. Yes, sir. Is there any chance to try to locate Mr. Cruz now, and then we'll just kind of come back to E? No, sure. No. I'll, go ahead. I'll shoot him a message right now and ask him and see what he says. Well, I think right now we should approve it because there's people okay. that they need to help. I mean, this would be in the future. Okay. I have a question. So for now, okay. it's okay. Go ahead. I, I, I would like because there's people behind us. They need it. So let's help them, but maybe next year or, or something or whatever. Does this, help, does, does this apply to the hourly as well? Yes. To the tour body. No, no, I'm not asking. I mean, I'm asking that we approve it because there's. Approve it as is and bring it As it is, and the then get an opinion later. If we don't have to bring it in, but get an opinion. If we ever decide, we still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the resolution clearly states how you can or can't get the uh, aid and when it ends and what happens if you run out. So I think the resolution covers you all. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Morales. And I do make a motion that we approve it uh, based on the committee. Thank you, sir. Okay, so. We have a motion by Mr. Spinoza. Second. Second by Ms. Nora Guerrero. Any other comments or questions? All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes 7 0. All right, letter of discussion considered to approve revising DEC local to add paid quarantine leave for police officers. Ms. Verona. The recommendation is that the Board of Trustees approve amending DC local to add a paid quarantine leave for police officers as presented. And, and this is a requirement. This is for paid leave for police officers. And we you have the statute. Yeah, the stat no, we don't have it. We didn't. Wow. The statute is here. 
I make a motion. Um, Got a motion by Ms. Nona Guerrero. I'll second. Second by Ms. Melissa Guerrero. Just a question, then. How, how does this work? Like, I mean, they, they don't fall under E or. or... What? How is it going to work for them? Sarah, what is the coverage? It's, uh, we're recommending 10 days. Same. But it's. Um, the policy um, or the law is that we can't uh, remove, remove any state or local leave, even if they've exhausted their emergency pay sick leave. We can't remove, we can't deduct uh, any state or local leave if they are subject to a quarantine because of a, a, a communicable disease, which is COVID. <laughs> Um, so this is this is different than the one that we approved. It's, yeah. it's specific to this department, and it's specific to peace officers, uh, firefighters. But for us, because we have our school resource officers, it's specific to them. Including Jesse, firefighter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got a motion by Miss Nora, second by Miss Melissa. Any other comments or questions? All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes 7 0. All right, any discussion and consider to approve adding the following positions LVN, uh, data fellow, life skills teacher, and teacher assistant as well. So the recommendation is that the Board of Trustees approve uh, these positions. So we are asking to replace uh, one of the um, CNAs that we had at Benito Juarez was transferred to high school upon request. And so we are asking that the board give us uh, a position for an LVN so that we can have um, highly skilled nursing, especially in, in the COVID world, uh, nurses that can, that can test. So we are asking that the nurses position at Benito Juarez be considered an LVN position and not a CNA. And the several LVNs do we have again? I'm sorry, we have just the one at high school? No, we have two LVNs. Oh, yeah, and at elementary. Two LVNs, yeah. The T TCDL. The uh, data fellow, we're gonna, oh. okay, we're going to go through all of these. Okay, so the data fellow is a position that we are asking, that we are required to have under T class, which is a grant that the district has engaged on and has been approved of. I reported on T class earlier in the fall semester. Uh, we do require to have a data fellow. And so we're asking that the board uh, grant us a position so that we can begin uh, posting. Uh, we are also asking for a life skills teacher and teacher assistant for Fly Junior High, since they have uh, a number of students that require life skills. So what we wanna have is a life skills unit at every campus so that the kids don't have to be uh, reporting to campuses that, they, um, that they're not registered in, that they're not enrolled in. So. Uh, we already have had the conversation with Mr. Alvarado. We already have the sites for them. We know that some of the classrooms will need some repair, uh, but we've, we've um, as far as funding is concerned, we have plenty of uh, funding under state uh, idea B. So we would be able to pick up both, both positions, but we do need to ask for your approval for those two. And they will start immediately or when would they start open the classroom up? When will the classroom be ready? to go with students when we find the people when, uh, after we after we post and find the, the the personnel there will be some modifications that we have to make to one room especially if we're going to add a changing table so we're going to have to make sure that we put that in i don't know i'm thinking maybe four weeks but the question is do you already have six through eight students that need to be there but they're on yes. the campus yes 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 so the need is there okay motion uh, uh, somebody made the motion already. All right, I got a motion by Mr. Cruz Mata, second by Ms. Nora Guerrero. Comments or questions? Yes, uh, Mr. Ones. Yes, sir. Can, can you also look at the uh, number of dyslexia students that we have in junior high? My understanding from some parents is that we have about 20, but they're all in the same role. I don't know if it's true or not. And I think if it's true, I mean, we're in violation of 504. Uh, Maybe we need to also look at maybe another teacher or something like that. So check it out. I'm not, yes. I, I don't know if it's true or not, but I, I have a couple of parents that have. We'll look at numbers. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other comments or questions? All in favor? Please raise your hand. 
Motion passes 7 0. Page discussion considered approved amending the CCISD 2021 and 2022 instructional calendar. So, because we had to submit the waiver and we had to go to remote instruction, and because we had to close Thursday and Friday of last week, we are having to amend the instructional calendar. And so, what we are doing is we had previously come before you all asking for early release dates on the dates listed. January 26th, February 16th, March 9th, March 11th, and April 19th. Because we had to close on Thursday and Friday, we are having to uh, redact these minutes from the instructional calendar. So the kids will now have full days of instruction on these days instead of having an early release. So taking into consideration the mandate, which is that we have to have 75,600 minutes uh, in the calendar year, and the fact that we've gone remote and closed for two days, our uh, calendar is now showing 77,265 total minutes. So we are still in compliance. And that was because of the waiver. The waiver really helped us out. Let me ask you a question, no, Nini, if, 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 because you know I mean, uh, it might get worse than minutes right now. I mean, Correct. we already look in yes. at space in case mm -hmm. we have to do Well, that. without having to, to but look I don't at have days. To Without having to look at days, we still have between three and four days in the calendar itself that we can, if we have to close, we can close without affecting the calendar. After the four days, the three to four days, because secondary and high and secondary and elementary minutes are a little bit different, but after the three or four days, mm -hmm. then we would have to come to you and, and ask you to extend the calendar. So, but we still have spring break. If we have to take spring break, we will take spring break. We still have uh, Good Friday, and we still have Monday after uh, Easter that we that we that we can. We're trying not to. Uh, Friday. So we're we're trying we're tracking transmissibility very closely, but um, we'll see how this what the end of the week holds uh, for us. All right. Any other kinds of questions? Any motion on the floor? Motion. I got a motion, Mr. Cruz Mato. I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Galicia Guerrero. All right, all in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes 7 0. All right, I discussion considered to approve the purchase of jackets for district employees. So the recommendation is that the Board of Trustees approve the purchase of jackets for all employees of the district. This would be coming out of the fund balance. Uh, for school board. <laughs> well, for the, for the whole district, sir. Yes, for the board, too. Uh, the, uh, the jacket would come with uh, with a logo already. So this is the this is the better uh, jacket that we were able to find, and so that would be the total cost. I, I, but I see that Johnny Lawrence is 325. Does that, cover, does that cover the whole district? Sir? We have 317 employees full-time and well, part-time, but... In the that's we only have three minutes left. Yeah, yeah, we're we're, we're pretty. Honest, that's including everybody. I mean, custodians, bus drivers, everybody. Does that include the, the positions that we just created? No, we would have to increase the quote. Do you want us, uh, does the jacket have a hoodie? You call, sir. I'm does sorry. Does the jacket have a hoodie? Does the jacket have a hoodie? I'm going to pass that on to Sarah. Yes, it uh, I believe it does. Yes, it does. Is it more like a windbreaker or yeah, it's like for the like weather? It's more of a windbreaker. Is it lined? Yes. But it's lined with mesh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what it said. It said that's what they were looking at. Like a windbreaker. A question. Yes, sir. Uh, this will be uh, when to the staff. I believe that uh, the, as soon as we submit the order, I believe they can have it ready within seven to ten business days for us. Okay, so so it won't we would still be going quick. It won't be till after winter. No, no. That's why we would move to yes. this company because they were they were ready to ship out pretty quickly. And they had that amount in stock. I believe so. So it's going to have. Uh, the name, we should best call this. I have the Havali, the logo. I move. Okay. All right, I got a motion by Melissa, second by Ms. Nora Guerrero. Any other comments or questions? All right, I have a motion. 
Sorry. Yeah. All in favor, please do down. Motion passes seven zero. And I just have a question though. Do you all approve that we if we have to increase by five or ten? Yes. And we increase it by five or ten. Okay. That's one. Everybody gets one. Okay. All right, moving on to eight, informational discussion, superintendent reports, district of Rome, ADA report. So clearly our numbers have been, our attendance has been impacted by COVID. Uh, right before closure, we were at 79%. Uh, coming into today, our numbers are still hurting. And we're all, uh, as of January the 14th, we were at 87.8%. Uh, we still have we still have a, a good number of students out. We you know we still have a number of staff out. So as we Jesse and the cabinet, we looked at some um, DSHS reports this morning, and for the county, and this is based on the data that we were looking at. We do we do, we have begun to see uh, that we've hit a peak, and so our numbers are beginning to decrease. It'll taper off. And again, you know, our numbers, our C the CDC numbers and our local numbers are not talking to one another. So it's it's difficult for us to know which data to to track. Well, Mr. During y'all's budget talks, because I wasn't here and I know you weren't here, but I'm sure you have the numbers. What <coughs> the projected ADA that we based our budget on? In... 2021 for 2021 this year in August 22. I believe Mr. Ramirez would have had to base it on 94 or 95 percent. 95. So being that I mean we're having problems uh, with attendance. Mm -hmm. So at the Wouldn't state level. Any better just uh, close than lose money on attendance. Well, the, the thing is that for a good chunk of time after we came back from the Christmas holidays, they were not allowing us to close. And so the guidance that we are receiving from commissioner is they have to approve. They have to approve your plan. So we, we closing, you would lose all of your instructional minutes and there is no funding for those things. So we were able to maintain half of our funding because we ran a short schedule. And I, I, I think I spoke to you about my concern about the kids right now that are home because of COVID, that they're not getting um, online instruction or teacher instruction. You told me something about the intrigue or something like that. About what I'm sorry? Intrigue. Or what is it? Some ingenuity. And then it's so ingenuity uh, from the very beginning, first semester for all the students that needed remote conferencing, uh, secondary level we were going to go with Ingenuity. So the campuses were supposed to submit things to AC. We create accounts for them for the time that they're going to be out. For the elementaries, we hired the two teachers, Mr. Perez and Mr. Peña, out of SRF grants, but they handled the secondaries because that's where we have the most numbers. Um, we visited again last week. Mrs. Rabasso has a list of about 10 students that need Ingenuity accounts, and so she and Ms. Martinez are working on creating those for for the students. Now, what we do need is the instructional cal the instructional schedule for each student. Ingenuity offers almost all the classes that uh, the state of Texas offers. It's all tex uh, TEKS approved. Um, so, you know, we would have we to- don't get no uh, teacher time. They have an on-demand teacher. They have an on-demand teacher. It's not their teacher because statute does not allow for us to do what is called roomy zoomy like it was under under when we were closed where the teachers could, uh, they had a classroom, but they could also uh, do remote. That is no longer allowed. So the teachers have to teach the kids that are there, and then we have to find a different program or a different manner of giving the students instruction. So other districts in the area don't have that? I wouldn't be able to tell you what the what other districts are doing. So if, let's say somebody, let's say La Prior is doing it. How are they getting it approved if it's not allowed? If not, if it's not allowed, like who doesn't allow it? The state? No, no, the state allows whatever you have. So if you wanted to hire teachers, you would hire teachers. To be able to, to do the that. remote, to do the remote. The issue that we have is that at high school, almost every teacher is a singleton. Almost every teacher teaches just the one class. So you would have multiple teachers having to do the remote conferencing.
Oh, there you go. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, where am I? Next thing is, uh, Mr. Mr. Um, Spinoza had requested the protocols, and so what we have done is that we have provided you the most current uh, protocols. This is a combination of the document that you see is a combination of guidelines, CA guidelines, local health advice, and so all of the decisions that we are making in terms of staff and students, quarantine, how many how many days they have to stay home, this is the document that we follow. For staff, Mrs. Garcia and Mr. Uh, Guajardo, they're the ones that keep that data. For students, it's, it's uh, Regina with the assistance of, Regina Perez, our RN, with the assistance of all uh, of the nurses. So that's how we are keeping track of numbers using this document. Well, let me, I have a question maybe to, to Mr. Guajardo, I mean, like, I mean, right now on, on staff members, they can come uh, within five days of, of testing positive. Staff? If a, te if a staff member tests positive. It depends on their vaccination status. Yes. Vaccinated? He can either stay out for five days or he can continue to work. He can vaccinate and he has no symptoms. And so again, what I was trying to do with this thing, I mean, do we know who's vaccinated and who's not? We, we have to ask the person now. Yeah, we don't automatically know because at the beginning of the school year, uh, that wasn't an option for the district to ask if an employee is vaccinated or not. Yeah, because I know here, not not only here, but in other districts, I mean, that they follow that, but they have to some of them, even after that, if there are no symptoms, are still testing positive, they're, they're back from school. I don't know, again, if later on we could ask, well, I mean, if it's five days, you feel good, still, I mean, I was, I, I was A high percentage of the staff that were uh, infected by the virus had both vaccinations and, and booster. even the booster. So this this virus is very contagious, very it transmits rapidly, and so almost every staff member is a case by case. Yeah, but I even know of people that are fully vaccinated have the boosters and uh, five days have passed, I feel okay. And, okay, and for their safety they go test. Mm -hmm. And they still find out that, I mean, they're positive. They go again a day later, they're positive. And in other instances, I know people that say, well, I mean, I, I have the wish and everything, and, and, and they go back to work. If, if, and, if, and, if a staff member uh, tests positive, he takes five days, has no symptoms, we're not asking him to test again to come back to school. We'll give him the five days. If he uh, if he himself uh, offers to test and comes back positive, he can still come to work because he'll continue to test positive. If he's vaccinated. Yes, if he's vaccinated. And do you just take the word for it or do they have to show proof of vaccination? Once we determine that they don't need a negative test to come back, they'll, they'll come back. They can come back within five days. And in some cases, if, if they don't have no symptoms, they can continue working without having to stay out for five days. And so each case, each case that we have case. for the adults is that case by case. Students, on the other hand, it's not about 10 days, right. whether they're symptomatic or asymptomatic, they're going to be out 10 days. Staff members, which is ideal, <laughs> different because of the CDC guidelines. And we're, we're having the, we had the chart with Mr. Cruz uh, that combines CDC, TEA uh, guidelines for us, and that's what we call I just hope, I mean, that we because we will have cases like that, that we don't have people that feel that they don't have any symptoms, it's about on five days, they're coming here and they're still, I mean, even if they have the booster and everything. So so if, if there's a kid that has, you know, the vaccination and is positive, stays home. but he's got no symptoms, he still has to stay home? He has to be five years and older. On the students, they have to stand, stand Oh, actually, no, no. Uh, what was the question again? So, you so, okay, so you're talking about that teachers who are positive and vaccinated with no symptoms can come to work or with symptoms can be at work. Right. But students can't. Students can't. He, okay, so what if a student has vaccination 
and is not showing symptoms, but is positive. They have to stay off the 10 days. They still have to stay off the that 10 days? That is a commissioner mandate, yes. Which is ideal, <laughs> but we need... Now, the, the, the case changes when it's a close contact. Five years and older can come to school if they're vaccinated. If they're not vaccinated, then they're going to stay out. That's pretty complicated. It is. It is. It is. Well, kind of contradicting, honestly. Uh, just one question. Can we legally ask an employee uh, or a student to show proof that they've been received all their vac vaccinations? It's a violation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they have to take the word for it. Yeah, yes. so if they say yes, then we, we take the word for it, okay. And for the most part, the, the, I mean, our staff is, is very compliant. They're, they're very compliant, so we haven't had an issue with that. My issue is with the, uh, like I'm saying, with the staff. <laughs> that, because I know about four or five different cases, two in Carriz, we call mm -hmm. no symptoms, everything. And that person said, well, I have some kids at home. Let me make sure he told seventh day, no symptoms, everything, and tested positive. She would have gone back to school. And... They'd be asymptomatic. Uh, and again, if they're vaccinated, they can come back to work. If they're not vaccinated, then they fall. All right. Jesse, I had a question. And, and do you think that it's the Omnicom uh, variant that's around here, basically? Are we just. We I'm not a doctor, but in my opinion, yes. What was the question? Because it's been so contagious. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and did you read also that supposedly the first 20 minutes of exposure is when you're the most, um, it's more dangerous. I mean, you can spread it in those first 20 minutes of you becoming exposed to something like that. That's what, that's what, that's what you're saying. There's just no telling. All right, moving on. C1 through 4, Ms. Bidonis. This is an update on board approved items. Uh, the vehicle purchases for security and police officers. This is uh, for, this has already been board approved. Uh, the vendor that officers uh, Segura is doing work with, they're out of stock of the, out of the 2022 models. So they're waiting on the 2023 models to be released. Uh, Ms. Chief Sewita can uh, can answer any questions that you have. We buy a uh, 20 model. Same price? <laughs> a 2020 model. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what about the truck, the same thing? The, the what? The maintenance truck, the security. We had approval. Uh, uh, for the police, yeah, for the, uh, the truck security. truck for the security people, the, middle, the same problem. Is it the same? The, the truck for the security people? The trucks, uh, I didn't get a response. I contacted her and she said she hasn't gotten any response Nothing. on that yet. Okay. Uh, the purchase of the ViewSonic panels, this is, this is board approved. Uh, we've had to reclassify some SR3 money. And so, uh, as Mr. Eid was mentioning, it's moving money around so that we have enough to, to purchase all of them because this is a hefty purchase. So that's in process. The purchase of the Chromebooks for high school, uh, all of the Chromebooks are on site. Jesse and his team are working on loading uh, apps on that. The purchase of iPads for Rivera Savala, there was a holdup uh, with this one because there was an uh, unpaid purchase order that dated back to May 2021. And so that's why Apple was holding our iPads back, but uh, that purchase order has since been paid. And so those should be arriving shortly. Um, so yeah, all of these purchases are in process. So on the first one, uh, I didn't get it. What are, when are they going to get the police uh, units? Chief, what is the date that they gave you for the 2023 models? They didn't give me a date, which no date. for the inventory. Can we, can we look somewhere else for you or are you okay with that or? Uh, yeah, I think we're okay. Just uh, we're just waiting for the new models to come in. Chief, I have a question. Why do we have to wait for the new models since we approved? Apparently, they sold out of the uh, 22 models. We purchased the 22 models. Apparently, when they were doing the paperwork, the process, the process, they uh, sold out of the 22 models. 
So now they have to wait for the 20. So they're not making 22s no more? No. I mean, we're just 24 days into 22. Yeah. In September, they start with the, uh, the new models for the following year. Is it going to be the same price? Are they going to charge you more for a newer model? And this is up in Caldwell? What's that again? This is in Caldwell, Texas? Out of curiosity, are we going through by board or this doesn't fall under that category? It's I think it under is. by board. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, number nine, informational. Informational Go ahead. items, uh, unless you all have any questions. Just on the email or on the uh, or we not or or we not required to get something from the athletics. Yes, they are required to submit the receipts, and we are having trouble collecting that information from very specifically the athletic booster. It doesn't mean. Uh, Nothing. Want to make sure the money's there. Yeah, we will. We will follow up. I mean, we haven't had information from them for. Forever, or never. I, I mean, all year. I mean, starting last year. You know, they were making money here and there and their football and everything. And, and they're having events, honestly. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure, I mean, that that money is there or it's been spent right or... We will follow. Any other questions under informational items? I'm just wondering if they uh, helped the athletic department with anything, the athletic booster. Coach? Coach. Okay. They did uh, purchase uh, batteries uh, for for the golf cart. The golf cart had died because when the road hit, you know, we just kind of stopped and it drained the battery and drained the charger. And uh, so they did purchase that. But they didn't know for that. Um, I know that uh, baseball and softball folks were going to ask them for uh, bats, balls, like right? they always do. You know, now, now we got to start. I mean, with, with the junior high baseball, so they're asking for some baseballs because you need some extra ones. And um, I know part of it was an asking for bags. I don't know uh, if, if they were given a quote for it or not. Um, Coach, do you know, I mean, in talking to whoever's the uh, president, has he given you a figure of how much they have so that you know? Sir, he's, he's very difficult. <laughs> I have difficulty getting a hold of him because uh, he won't answer questions. The number changes. I actually, uh, the, the, the easiest person to the treasurer. This is Chase. And uh, you know, because I was always right. John and Mr. Guerrero said, "Hey, uh, the gym." He said, "What do you mean?" He said, "Well, it's starting to leak." Well, I haven't heard anything about it yet. Uh, but at least we didn't start the, the basketball league. So okay. that kind of relief for me. We need to make a very strong effort to. Collect. It's some yeah. or quote him out of office or <laughs> I mean I just want to make sure I mean this one is for the kids. The band the band people are or or buying this and that and, and, and so I mean is there anything the school could do, Miss Bionic? Yes we can. We will follow. So, do we need to start? Yeah. So to call him and find out and tell them that if not whatever we can do to get that money and check with the attorney, we can just say, based on requests from the school, I mean, or we're just gonna get you out of a, a course, a prison or whatever. Any other questions under instructional uh, information items? All right, moving on to 10 open session. It's discussion regarding public sanction for the continued violation of CCSD board member policy by board member Peggy Young, previously sanctioned by the CCSD board of trustees on August 30th, 2021. So this one here, ladies and gentlemen, I brought this to the board because Ms. Briones, as of December, shared a few emails, but obviously not all of them, which I'm just now reading. Now, I got questions for Ms. Young. Ms. Young, back in December, Ms. Young, you had requested for an audit of the finances, is this correct? Right. Okay. So then um, you requested that Ms. Bidonis did bring, it to, did bring it to my attention, which we put it on the board. Is that correct? It was, it was on the agenda for the board meeting. Is that correct? When? 
Last month in December, December 13th. No, I listened to it and uh, y'all just discussed what Mr. Ede. Mr. Ede. Yeah, you discussed that Mr. Ede would be given his report. Okay. And that she had talked to Region 20 and they said they couldn't do an audit. I see in here it was Mr. Vada. Okay. Uh, I sent an email back and told her I didn't want an audit. That was okay. the wrong so, so hold on. So, so your item, your request was actually placed on the agenda, ma'am, and it was actually voted down by four board members. That's I wasn't, hold on, I wasn't here, okay, but it was voted down. That's fine. Now, that was on December 13th, which was the meeting. The following day, you took it upon yourself to call a Region 20 specialist, correct? Okay, yes. Okay, and what exactly happened in that conversation? Because... I asked her how does a board member go about getting something from the superintendent, and I told her, she said, what are you needing? I said, I'd like to have a summary of finances. I would like to have expenditures versus uh, revenue. And she's like, you shouldn't have to jump through hoops. She said, I'll call Ms. Briones. I said, okay. So you never talked bad about the district? You never talked- No, I didn't about talk bad about the district. Okay, because we heard, well, Ms. Briones heard differently is what I'm saying. You pretty much uh, indicated that we had tapped into the reserves, that you were fully concerned about our finances with the district. I told her I was very concerned because we had no budget amendments, and I think Mr. Ede agrees with me. Okay, so Mr. Ede just said, and it, I'm sorry, earlier, we just submitted the first budget since we approved the budget. So what is Mr. Ede talking about exactly? He just said that budget amendments are necessary. I understand they are, and it comes to the board when it would need to be, ma'am. But nothing was done since August, since the board would approve till recently today. So what, what concerns is that? You know, Eric, I don't owe you an explanation. No, you do owe, you do owe the board an explanation. Why, everything, Why not? Everything that I ask for is within the realm of my inherent capacity as a board member. Okay. Every single one of these has been sent to TEA. That's fine. Tells, you can send everything. He tells me the same thing. Keep asking. Keep okay. asking. But you did call him as being honest a liar, didn't you, on an email? You told her that you never contacted Region 20, but in here you did find Mr. Vada's email. I... Didn't, no, you, you, I didn't tell her I'll call her a liar. Ma'am, you put it on here that she had never contacted Region 20. That's a big difference between calling her a liar. Oh, that's technically... I said she did not contact Region 20. Okay. Well, At least the lady that I talked to. Okay. So were you wrong about her not contacting Region 20? Because technically, Miss Charlotte contacted Ms. Briones after your conversation with her. Well, nothing ever became of it. I guess Dina ignored it because I still have it yet for it to be on the agenda. And I can also sue her for not getting things that are not on the agenda. She has 20 days to give it to me. Technically, an existing file can be given to you within 20 days. Something that does not exist and does not belong in the district property? What I'm asking for, she has. In any district in the world, it would be a push of a button and maybe 20 pages or 30 would be shot out. Well, ma'am, but you're asking for a report that is not here, is what I'm trying to I say. I should have the right to know what we're spending. Okay. I should have the but right. you don't have the right to contact Region 20 because they are a current provider for the district. That's not you what have to go to Ms. Briones. Yeah, tells me. Now, the CEA is telling you different. So I think they think we're very dysfunctional and they understand that stuff doesn't happen here as usual. Oh, no, but again, so going back to this, you know, you have Mr. Vada that stated on here that he pretty much told Ms. Briones that it is a conflict of interest if they do our finance audit because they actually do our audit. Please, Mr. Vada thinks we're crazy. Um, the attorney fees, I have every right to ask. Those are public funds. Listen, we're not denying your request. It's just that some of these are, we put, we put your item on the agenda for December 13th. Eric, you are not God. I don't have to ask you what to put on the agenda. She, I have a superintendent, I can ask her. You go through her, why are you going through Region 20 for items? I did go through her. I can go way back when I sent my first request. And, 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 and just the fact, ma'am, that it's like the, the one you sent in January, first day back, you know, you, you're very demanding. It seems like you're just trying to create a very, you know, hostile environment for Ms. Bjorn. I mean, you did it to her two previous interim superintendents, which is why they left. Uh, I'm sorry they left, but I have a right to ask questions. Well, you, I have violated, a you violated policy is all I can say. No, I didn't. Whether whether you, you admit it or not, whether you like it or not, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. He said, you know, you have no superintendent, Ms. Young. You have no finance director. You have no board policies. 
You have no, no, you have two IR campuses and yet they spend money with an attorney to file sanctions, which there's no law on the books that even support it, except for a board telling me. Well, and, that, and then we have to go pay the attorney because because of TA complaints being submitted left and right. Three hundred and fifty seven thousand dollars is not because of me. Sir, he'd say we're fine. What's the problem? None of it has to do with me. You don't even bring it to the table. We don't know what you talk about. Bring it to the table. Everything is all. Everything was about the grievances. No, you don't. Everything was for grievances. No. You had a breakdown for Mr. Cruz. Some of those uh, fees were based on Mrs. Young's request. So what? I don't agree with anything he says. You don't agree. You don't agree. So I'm going to let Ms. Bionez talk to us about her conversation with Ms. Charlotte from Region 20. So after uh, the board meeting that we had, uh, Charlotte did give me a call. Charlotte is my contact in terms of accounting, okay? But Charlotte has higher ups that she has to answer to. And so uh, she notified me that Ms. Young had called her and had, uh, was asking for very specific items, um, very global. And so Charlie was trying to kind of narrow down what it was that Mrs. Young was asking for because it's a very, you know, when you ask for financials, financials is very broad. You need to, you need to narrow it down to what is it that you want. And I don't, can't speak to the conversation that Ms. Young had with Charlotte. I can only speak to what Charlotte told me. Uh, her comment was that she, she, she was, that Ms. Young was concerned that we were tapping into our revenues and which is not the case. It's not the case. The, the audit that you all received is for 2021, but our numbers uh, budgetary-wise right now are, are very healthy. If anything, we've, we're, we're under-expending because we have a lot of money. We have a lot of money out of uh, the federal grants. And so uh, Mrs. Young did request for, for an expenditures uh, versus uh, uh, revenue versus expenditures report. We were in the middle of reclassifying, so... Uh, can we give that? Yes, we can. It, I mean, we have to put it together, but it wouldn't be a true picture of what we, where we're trying to move because what we're trying to do is we're trying to close out year zero and year one out of the federal funds because they're carryover funds. We're trying to make sure that we don't run into the same issue with state comp ed that we ran in this report, which is to have an underexpended state account. Uh, and so, uh, the, the, the motion then was, okay, so we'll, we'll put the revenues versus expenditures uh, in, in the system, but we can't do that while we're reclassifying. So what I need is, what is it that the collective board is asking for? Are you asking for full financials? Because we won't be able to give you something like this, because this is a, this is a full year's worth of work. If you want a recap, of, all, of a summary of all the accounts and where we are at, what was uh, appropriated at the beginning of the year and what has been expended in terms of percentages, we can present that to you. But to say full financials is to present a full financial. To us, that's what a full financial is, is an audit. If that's what you need, then we have to go third party. Region 20 cannot conduct uh, the audit for us, the full financial, because they are, it's, a, it's a conflict of interest. We can go third party if that is the will of the board. If what you want is just a recap of appropriations versus expenditures, then we can provide that for you. We can do that here internally. You know, it, it may be foreign to us, but you know, most school districts give an end of the year summary of their finances for the public. We don't do that. I don't know. I send all my emails to TEA. If I am everything. And he keeps telling me to keep asking, keep asking, have a board realignment, have a board realignment, uh, keep asking for attorney fees. They're not your money, they're public funds. And I mean, how do, how do all these harassing emails make you feel? I'm I mean, how, do all the, how does all this make you feel? So what I have told Mr. Mr. Uh, Garcia is, I emotion, if you take the emotional, all the, you know, whatever from the emails, it's, they're perfectly legit requests. I don't have an issue with that. We can provide any one of you with any type of report, but it's the insinuation that we're not doing, the insinuation that we don't have it, the insinuation that we're dropping the ball. That is, that is unnecessary. It is unnecessary. 
my responses will, and I told you in close one day, my responses will always be very short because I will not engage with anyone at that level. You don't have to engage with me. You just send me what I asked for. You don't have to. Hey, and there was can you come, please? You don't have to be that disrespectful to her. You're the one that brought this to the yeah, table. Just look how you're acting, ma'am. I mean, let me read this one you said, for example. Okay, this was sent January 5th. After oh, hold on, let me speak. It says, I am asking one last time for a review of our finances to be put on the agenda for January. Not an audit. I told you email wrong terminology. So you went from an audit because four board members rejected your audit. Now you want to change your terminology. That's fine. I want a side-by-side -side revenue. All right. You put in the Sentinel and you're accusing her. You put in the Sentinel that we look okay. No, we don't. That's your opinion. Okay. No districts doing well have low indicators. That's right. Community doesn't get that was 2019 work. That's right. Mr. E will explain. Mr. E just said we're great. So what is your problem? Why do we get dinged every year? Why do we get dinged every single year? And I believe. Are we superior? I believe. We asked the superior? last. Uh, said the last. It doesn't matter. We're still dinged. I'm sorry, but, but you can't talk to her like she's your child. Eric, I'm not asking for anything that is not within the realm of my capacity as a board member to ask for. If we go back to when the previous superintendent was here, oh my God, the volume and volume and volume of things that you asked of that man. Me? Don't worry. Me? He turned it all in. TEA told me. Thousands and thousands of requests. Me? He didn't say the names. I really doubt it's thousands. He said board. Oh, no, no. Uh, I think the overtime, the overtime, the overtime, the overtime, the overtime that Mr. Churchill put in teams. And what, hey, and what happened with, him, with an employee in TRS that was part-timer? Do what? I said, what happened to a part-time employee getting... We had one employee that had an hour over. It matter. And it's not our problem. It it's matter. not this district's problem. It it's her problem and she paid it. It is not our problem. She didn't work for us. She was retired. And she took care of it. And TRS had no problem with it. What we ought to worry about yeah, is the TRS had a problem with it. What we ought to worry about are the people that are getting shortchanged in TRS. Their policies are not getting paid. That kind of thing. How do you know all that, ma'am? They go to I get emails from I get messages from teachers. Wow. Not a single teacher that went to the prior could get their contract signed until they had a very good confirmation. Their service record had to be confirmed with TRS. Did anybody have comments or questions? This is very concerning because this has been an ongoing issue with, with uh, it's been going on with Gonzalez, it happened with Ramirez. Uh, it, this is getting ridiculous to be quite honest. You should ask more questions. I think you're the only one that feels that Maybe way. we should, we, we don't do anything by law. We should have a self-evaluation. We would already been disbanded if we don't do anything by we law. We should have a self-evaluation. That's what I'm starting with you again, because you just won't leave. Oh, please. But I didn't put my family, I didn't yeah, put my family on the you're vendor very list. Rude. You're very rude. You're very, what? That does not matter. I didn't put my family on the vendor list. Who cares? I was very honest about it, and I'll sign the contract. You don't sign your ethic page when you raise your hand and you're swore in? Well, it doesn't matter. Do you want my family to starve to death or what? Does that not mean it that matters to work TK. in it, this town? It matters I to people. I was TK. very transparent. It matters. Uh, I was transparent. I sent in my certificates, and it's not illegal for my husband to work for the district if he submits a fair bid. It's called it's not being unfair. It's called ethics. No, well, I'm sorry, but my family has my family has to be supported too. And if right. that's his profession, I don't think it should be up to you if he gets hired or not around here. I don't have we to. Don't, I just, we don't want your. We all here. raise our hands. It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. Okay, we all have a family to support and a business to sustain. And you should be happy that there's businesses here locally that can provide professional services, whether you like it or not. I just think we need to do the other thing, Nora. And I just think you should be the better person and start acting like a board member and stop harassing Dina and Anna. I act like Anna a board member. I no, act like. No, you're the only one that feels like that. I act like a board you're member. The I know. I know. feels like that. I'm odd. I know. I, TEA says, you know, Michonne, I, 
I really hope they put us out of our misery, and I think they are. Well, I think that's what you're hoping, ma'am. I am you're, hoping. You're bringing this district down is what you're doing, you no, know? I'm no, I'm not. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. You're sabotaging this district, no, whether you want to hear that or not. No, I'm not. You're, you're very anti-crystal. You don't vote for sports. You don't, you don't care for the kids. You don't care for the kids' safety during football season. You voted for helmets to, to not be purchased. You don't understand the sport of football. It's hard to wrap my head around athletics when we don't do the right thing at this board table. But you know what you don't understand, ma'am, is that sports keeps keeps kids going when it comes to education. Because if they don't play, if they don't pass, they don't play. It's fine. It's fine. But I wasn't the only one that voted against sports. No, you were. No, I wasn't. Yeah, you were. No, I wasn't. No, you know, all these complaints, all these investigations, everything to date, I mean, I'm getting pretty tired of it. It's been years. I mean, I hope really. Isn't that really sad? It's been years. We've been yeah. on the radar. Yes, it has. Yes, it has. You haven't stopped sending information to TEA. Mm. I mean, hopefully we get an answer soon so we can put everything to rest. Because if it were that severe, what she's reporting and saying, don't you think TEA would have already had an answer for us? A solution? Something? I mean, it is it is draining and it's tiring what you're doing, Peggy, and you know it. I. Uh, we're moving on. Number 11, closed session. The board trustee will meet in closed session as authorized under the Texas Government Code, Section 501.074, consultation with attorney, and, and Section 501.074, uh, personal matters of the Open Meetings Act. Time is? 7.46. Recording stopped.